in. Select X has opted to switch over to Restoration Druid, favoring the long game healer. I think that's a wise decision. On Team Rock, they're going to be leading the charge with the Warrior Demon Hunter and Triple Adaptation, a very aggressive talent choice from Team Rock. I actually think that's a really wise choice against Hunter teams because when you have the Demon Hunter on your side, I believe that uh, he's playing the Spirit Link talent, so not only does he have that permanent Spirit Link that is really effective, but also with a, with the Demon Hunter that has reverse magic and the adaptation, effectively every single trap from the Hunter could get reversed. And that means that you know he's not going to be able to land that CC, and I, I think puts him in a position where they need to kind of just rely on just consistent damage the entire time and potentially getting pressure onto the Restoration Shaman. Interesting strategy from Team Rock, just running at the healer select, trying to figure out if he's going to be weak on that Restoration Druid. It's an alternate healer for him, so I like Rock kind of playing it out and trying to figure out which is the softest target. Now going back to more standard play. Freezing Trap, though, secured, and Juan Fumdi could be in trouble. Is Uface going to be able to stay on target is the question. That Freezing Trap having just faded. Mal connecting some big Riptide, saving the day. Dog Mage making a swap over to select. That Tree of Life form has faded. How is he going to deal with the pressure, Dill? Right. I, I actually have noticed they've been killing the pet from Chicken Jack a lot, uh, abusing the, the Beastmaster who relies on it for damage. And this is actually putting them behind. And I also see very wise usage of the Spirit Link talent. He's not spamming it off of cooldown. He's using it um, kind of infrequently when he knows that his team is in danger. And that's to be mana efficient because he knows he's up against a Restoration Druid, known for being the most mana efficient healer in the game. And I, I think that that strategy is playing out for them very well. But there's tons of pressure coming out to Select X. They force him to use that Iron Bark. They want to try to get this game where they can end it slowly because I actually think that this KFC can outlast against them. They have the BM Hunter. They have the Arms Warrior damage. Getting that consistent pressure throughout the game, eventually that Restoration Shaman will fall behind and they need to find their window to win. The clean setup from Team Beast, getting two members into crowd control and focusing down the third. Stormbolt into Freezing Trap. Reverse Magic available. Dog Mage trying to retreat back to get that. Good teamwork from Dog Mage, breaking his healer out of crowd control and now allowing them to lead the charge. Both healers fairly even on mana. It has been quite an even fight throughout this. Tree of Life not available for quite some time. Select needs to be careful. He's trying to avoid it, but they're just all on top of him. Mao moving him as well for potentially some purge pressure. He's got to be careful if he spends too much mana on purging he's likely to lose the long game both healers falling behind on fundi dipping down to half storm bolt freezing trap and adaptation available the adaptation triple is a great pickup it's allowing rock to get out of all of these stuns and traps quite frequently and keep up their pressure on select right i actually think their strategy is amazing and you can even know select was prepared to be tunneled he is actually playing that renewal instead of playing that tiger dash or anything else to help him escape with the amount of pressure they put on them this entire game, it's just been very overwhelming. I love the strategy coming out from this Demon Hunter Warrior Wrestler Shaman. It's well executed. Mayo just being incredibly intelligent by not spamming oh. a Sterling Shaman. Yeah, a ton of pressure coming out. Both sides. One. Having to trade out Die by the Sword, and they are still both in trouble. Freezing Trap secured. Die by the Sword is going to be fading, but Reverse Magic saves the day. Dog Mage MVP plays in this match. It's not typical to see a Shaman or a Druid this low on mana this early on. Both of these teams have come out to play, bringing tons of damage at the moment. Both Warriors are the most exposed target with a full fear secured. Can they follow it up is the question. Select on the run. He's got no bar skin for nine seconds. Needs to keep his distance. Amazing Ursula's Vortex getting the Warrior off of him quite easily as mana is about to be tapped. We're very close to dampening. Uface caught into potentially some danger here. Charging over the center map, trying to execute a kill here. On Fumdi with no support, but Adaptation breaks Mal out of that freezing trap, allowing them to lead the charge towards Select. Right, and you can actually notice both of these warriors have both been getting pressured, and they have no defensive cooldowns available to them. They both have the Rallying Cry, but no retaliation. That's going to be huge trouble, considering both of these comps rely on a lot of physical melee attacks. This is a very scary position to be in. We can see the, the healer's pressure and their healer's mana going lower and lower, but with that Innervate coming back up for Select, he has the Tree of Life. He's going to be in this moment where he is finally able to recover a little bit on mana, and Mal is finally falling behind, even with him being so careful with these spirit links he's he's being very conservative using them when he needs them and a beautiful reverse magic coming out from dog mage he's just getting all this non-stop pressure on this kfc he has beautiful uptime doing a great job making sure to not get kited making these excellent swaps onto select x and their team is just so coordinated with these melee clip swaps instead of just telling one target they're they're making great usage of hitting what they can and anytime they have the opportunity they are punishing that target forcing select to have to use so much mana select trying to stay next to that basilisk can get a bit of extra damage that's why he's not kiting across the map but he stacks up for a double stun. Could be a bit of danger, catches a quick swift mend. 
Luckily for Mao, he's got his adaptation available. He's going to be breaking out of that freezing trap, but into a full intimidating shout. One from the in trouble. They've got darkness. They are going to trade that out. Dog Mage has been Ooh. doing a phenomenal job on this demon hunter. Just top notch level play from him. The reverse magics, good defensive cooldown management. Really no mistakes from either side. One Fundi falling further behind. Will Mao be able to save him? Connecting that spirit link. Breaking up some of the pressure and allowing him to cast some heals out. Going for a cheeky hex, maybe trying to bait select out of bear farm. Select immensely on the back foot, trading out that renewal. Very big heal as well as Iron Bark. He's on the run. Mal moving in potentially for some purge pressure as well as we've just stepped into dampening. No adaptation. Reverse magic. Dog Mage needs to make sure he gets his Shaman out of this next freezing trap as soon as possible. Yeah, and they did a great job. They were actually going for the Stormbolt trap, and we actually saw one Fung. He used that full Intimidating Shout onto Chicken Jack, who had no Trinket, and this is a very awful pre uh, position for them to be in. They might have gotten more defensive cooldowns because they did see that Darkness being used the last setup, like he called out, but they actually did... When babies anfangen davon zu krabbeln, wird es schwierig, ihnen herkömmliche Windeln anzuziehen. Pampers Pants mit optimaler Passform. Sie lassen sich ganz einfach anziehen, auch wenn ihr Baby sich bewegt. Für einen optimalen Besitz und bis zu 12 Stunden Trockenheit. Wenn Babys anfangen zu krabbeln, ist es Zeit für Pampers Pants. Use the rallying cry as well, so they do have nothing. The Demon Hunter Warrior needs to close out this game. Select is so low on mana, they just need to connect on him. He is playing that relentless, so any stuns that are full on him are going to be extremely scary for him if they can get a fell eruption with him out of that bear form, which is very strong for Estragers as far as surviving. Yeah, at the moment, they're denying Chicken Jack his revive pet. They've been interrupting it consistently over and over. And as Beast Mastery, you're not much of a beast without the beast. If they can keep interrupting this, they've actually forced Aspect of the Turtle simply to resurrect his pet. And that's going to put them incredibly far behind as Mana is now in favor of Team Rock. Mal needs to perfectly time these Spirit Links. He can't afford to expend any that aren't necessary. How much longer can Select stay alive, though, as we're now mounting into 10% healing reduction. Select's trying to kite out of the Earthen Shield Totem. The Basilisk is moving in for potential kill opportunity here. Is he going to be able to stay alive? Ascendance gets popped. Mao boosts his healing. You face now on the back foot. He is playing an alternate specialization. Let's see how he gets put to the test. Die by the sword is traded out. Pressure onto two members of Team Beast with both select and you face under fire. Daphne is so high. Dog Mage pulls the trigger. Tons of damage. We're, and we're getting so close to this window that Select can recover. He has an inner bait. He has a tree of life, but a full intimidating shout hits him. He's so low, 20% HP. They might finish oh. him off with the execute, and it does go out. Select goes down for the first game, and Team Rock will secure their first win of this tournament. The number one seed, Rock, looking fantastic in that first one. And a close game back and forth on both sides. We talked a little bit about some of the strategies that might come out from them. It was very interesting to see both the Spirit Link talent and the Demonic on the Demon Hunter there providing that off healing. What did you think of the choice? That's something that's really hard to play against as the Hunter does. Right, right. That's something that has been popular with North America. But what I actually loved was the double adaptation. This means that you cannot get these full freezing traps, and it's even harder for... Uh, Beastmaster Hunter, where survival hunters can actually play the undisposable trap that prevents the reverse magics. And then at the same time, they're actually going for these these spirit links that they're not using them off cooldown. One mistake that I actually will see rest of shamans do is when they play that spirit link talent, they'll use it off cooldown. But he actually is only waiting to use it when absolutely necessary. And this puts so much more pressure onto the BM Hunter Warrior team. And, and we actually saw it go to a mana game where the shaman was able to effectively win right when they had Tree of Life coming back up for Select. Yeah, and that means those little micro differences that really made it in the end. You can see Mal was so low on mana on that Restoration Shaman, but he's just so apt on it. He knows when he can and cannot use that mana, able to get the Great Spirit links out with the Demonic Great Heals coming out. But on the other side, Select, who's saying he's been playing Paladin for 10 years, said, but this is his first tournament. He said he set up this Restoration Druid just for this tournament. He looked good, but do you think they exposed the weakness a little bit? Uh, I mean, definitely. It, it seems like it was very difficult for him to ever go for crowd control and fighting triple adaptation. Cyclone is a way that they could work around that, but it's really difficult when you've got three basically melee classes with the Shaman dog piling on top of you with multiple interrupts to actually get those Cyclones. But if they're going to take it, they definitely need it. They have to get the adaptations out of the way. Cross pressure on your opponent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, game number two underway between Team Rock and Team Beast. Already triggering adaptation from Mao. Let's see if Team Beast are going to change up their strategy at all. It does not appear to be the case just yet as they are focusing down Juan, the warrior. Freezing trap secured. Juan actually in potentially a lot of trouble, dipping dangerously low. Nice intimidating shout. They're looking to pull a die by the sword, but you face as well. It's forced to trade out at 1% and barely stay alive. Both teams come out swinging. 
Yeah, actually, Chicken Jack made a very wise decision in that he opened with the Intimidation, noticing that Mayo not playing that orc. He was actually playing Panda, such as uh, we've seen some North American teams do, and he realized he could get the adaptation with that. Go for the DR Stormbolt, go for the trap, and they had cover on Dog Mage, so he wasn't able to get that immediately. And then following up with that fear and that insane pressure, I think the strategy actually can work out with them. Now they have a full trap. There is no, there is no reverse this. magic, and when Wafu has nothing, he has the heroic leave away, but he's so low. 20% HP. They try to get the burst on him. DR Bash comes out, and they're trying to get as much offensive pressure as possible. Mao holding on, having to reapply that spirit link, and trying to save him with those Riptide healing. But Mao's just getting low himself, and it's getting harder and harder for them to get that same offensive pressure. They had their first game, and I think Team B's really have changed up their strategy, and it is, and it is showing. This looks like an entirely different team from Team Beast on game number two. Their pressure and momentum is insane. Nice interrupt onto Mao into the stun. They're going to get adaptation. Select on the back foot. Needs to make sure that he's stable for his team to stay aggressive. He's actually getting pummeled by Juan, but a full freezing trap. Reverse magic gets him out of that. Connecting the spirit link. Select still on the run. Very minimal defensive cooldowns for him. It's a very small map. There's not very much distance for him to run. He's just staying at one pillar, trying to line of sight Mao and pull him into bad positions. I'd really love to see you face just go for some sweeping strikes, cleave down the whole team. They've got a lot of pressure right now, but you face falling behind. Select trying to pick him up. Rock switching to multiple targets, trying to attack the non-life bloom target. It's really starting to put in work. Select getting interrupted by Dog Mage as Rock closed game two. That, that that was so surprising for me. They had the window. Team Beast was so close to being able to win. They they had Intimidating Shao coming back up. They had nothing left from Team Rock. And I mean, we saw how desperately he was trying to run away on that warrior. He was trying to keep himself alive, but those offensive purges and knowing when they could switch the game around, realizing that they have just that pretty much 10 second window to win the game, they took their opportunity and Team Rock really impressing me with that switch right there. I mean, Team Beast came out the gates flying in this game. Right, right. Compared to game one where Select was just under pressure from start to finish, they absolutely slayed at the start. They put the pressure where it needed a one game away from advancing, representing Taiwan, knocking another Korean team down to the lower bracket, but Team Beast aren't out of it just yet. Interesting, Mao's actually switched back to the Gladiator's Medallion instead of Adaptation. He doesn't want to leave any risky openings, but this means that Chicken Jack can secure more freezing traps. Now, instantly changing back to Adaptation. One second before the gate opened there, I was going to say, I feel like the Adaptation might be a better pick. Mao and his team leading to center bridge it looks like the Beastmaster Hunter Chicken Jack is actually attacking Mao. He's going to proc that adaptation. See if he goes for a freezing trap out of it. Not looking to get it just yet. Select is under fire. He's going to be ducking for cover. Jumping off the bridge. Really good kiting there. But Chicken Jack falls behind as he was left alone on the bridge. Barely staying alive. Select connects the heal just in time. Yeah, very, very scary go right there. And, and as you are saying, he actually was uh, attacking the Restoration Trauma with his pet to get that intimidation intimidation off because that's what it relies on the pet has to hit the target to stun them and they're they're going for that same strategy as the last game but i mean when babies anfangen davon zu krabbeln wird es schwierig ihnen herkömmliche windeln anzuziehen pampers pants mit optimaler passform sie lassen sich ganz einfach anziehen auch wenn ihr baby sich bewegt für einen optimalen Sitz und bis zu 12 stunden trockenheit wenn babies anfangen zu krabbeln ist es zeit für pampers pants that, that was a little bit of a, a risky play from them jumping off, and they, I, I love how Rock completely capitalized on that opportunity. They went for that double stun there. They knew that Chaos Nova could generate huge pressure onto Chicken Jack and enforcing out his exhilaration. Now, he was able to be greedy and hold on to his uh, aspect of the turtle and his Gladiator's Medallion, so things do look kind of okay for him, but you just never want to be in that position where you kind of let something scary like that happen, and they use a reverse magic and go for the Fell Eruption onto Select, effectively cross seeing Chicken Jack with his own CC, and that was a beautifully executed play. Dog Mage, I feel like, has been the absolute MVP on Team Rock just with this extremely, extremely efficient Demon Hunter play. Yeah, Dog Mage is very impressive here today. Really good support for his team, really good pressure, just all around a solid player. Select now on the back foot, caught into crowd control. You face dipping dangerously low, disarming Juan, trying to pause out the pressure, but ultimately has to trade his most precious defensive. Select falling behind. It's match point as Rock move forward and take a massive lead, potentially the game as Select barely escaping to safety. He needs to get some distance, but they're just staying right on top of him. He's got no options at this point. If he can't get away, he will be going down. Great peels from you face. By select the time to get out of line of sight of Juan. Juan switches targets, bursting down U-Face. Selects really doesn't have much to work with here, Dill.
But look, look at the mana difference of these healers. Select is still at around 80% mana, and Mao has 20%. They're trying to stay as offensive as possible. Rock needs to find that same opportunity from the last game, close it out as soon as possible, because if they do not, Team Beast could actually turn around this series. You face is so low right now, though. No retaliation, no, oh. no rallying cry. He has nothing left, and they swap onto Select, forcing him to use the Iron Bark. Triple Fear comes out. Select in that fear. The fear breaks from them doing damage, and they go for the Storm Roll. They have a Freezing Trap available, but they have the Intimidation, and he misses the trap. This is going to be huge for the pressure of Team Beast, and you face could go down 20%. HP. They're trying to keep up the momentum. They have these final purges to get the sheer onto select, and he goes down. Team Rock with a beautiful 3 0. Beautiful 3 0 coming out of Team Rock. They just looked better and better in that last game, and select just couldn't keep up. So much damage, so many purges, great crowd control. The fear at the end to deny the heals, and then they didn't break it crucially for a few seconds, allowing the bark skin to disappear. But fantastic play coming out of Team Rock, and Taiwan's number one are here to play, and they'll be going up against the Australia number one in the next series, Ted. That's going to be an absolute banger. Yeah, most certainly will be. I'm really hoping that we see Team Beast kind of go back to their main specializations just as an experiment. I mean, we're all being optimistic on the desk with the Warlock, but I, I just really want to say, see you face play it because he's easily comparable to the likes of Chanimal, and it would be quite the showcase. If anyone could make it work here today, it would be him. They did a valiant job there on the KFC, but unfortunately, I think the inexperience on the alternate specializations, whereas Team Rock, they had a rock-solid strategy. They just knew exactly what they needed to do. It was obvious that they had studied the meta from North America and prepared phenomenally for this. Yeah, I, I'm actually, I have to say, even though I was a fan of Chicken Get Jack going into this game, <laughs> Team Rock has absolutely impressed me. I, I honestly think that Dog Mage is probably the best team hunter I've ever watched. Like, that, that guy had super effective strategies. He was super clean. All of his um, Demon Hunter dashes were always absolutely quick, like thinking ahead of time, because it still has a little bit of a delay when you go for that dash. And he was just playing absolutely phenomenally, taking every opportunity to get these great reverse magics, and, and then even using that reverse magic, getting that trap onto Chicken Jack, and knowing that he could actually use that as, as cross mm -hmm. CC for him. That, that's something you rarely see people do. That was 200 IQ Demon Hunter gameplay right there. And maybe it's because he also plays a mage. Yeah, I, I mean, it was, it was great cross, cross crown control. It was all done by him, right? It was the fell mm -hmm. eruption stun from him, the, the reverse magic on the trap. And we saw this multiple times. I was talking about it in game two. That was kind of what reversed the pressure. And there were some real big moments in this game, like Chicken Jack almost dying there before his turtle. I've seen things that will scare you shellless was almost enough to take him down mm -hmm. in that one. But Team Rock just looking rock solid in that game. Dog Mage playing on fire. Wan Fu, his name in Chinese literally means invincible. And he's looking invincible in this tournament, so... I mean, there were a couple of close calls. No, 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 invincible. Uh, no, but... Oh, no, but <laughs> he didn't but die. He, okay. he, 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 d he didn't... Yeah, if you don't die, then obviously yeah, you're invincible. Right, right, right yeah. Face, exactly. He was just playing a prank on them, you know, letting them think that they could kill him. I mean, they, they got him to, like, 5%, like, what, two games in a row, and he still didn't finish him off, right? And, and I mean, on the Shaman as well, Mao was playing fantastically. We talked about how close some of these games were. Even game three, which I think it's fair to say Rock had the momentum the entire time, Mao low on mana, and it's because he's making efficient plays that he even has a mana pool left to keep his team in it in the first place. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he, he's my vote for being the Taiwanese app surge, for sure. <laughs> We're going to be making these cross comparisons all day, but Rock are the winners. They will be going up against Gronks in their next game. Uh, that will be the Taiwan number one versus the that's gonna Australian be good. New Zealand yeah, number that's one. That's going to be good. Like, after exciting. seeing that performance, that's going to be really good. And what's better is that now we have the Korea number one coming up in our next series. So we've seen Australia put their front foot forward. Now we've seen Taiwan put their front. By Dog Mage from Rock, and uh, I got a few questions for him here. So the first one for me, uh, the castles that were off screen that I was watching with, uh, thoughts behind you guys running triple adaptation because that's something that we don't see too often. Uh, it's definitely something that we weren't expecting. So can you give us a sort of thought pattern behind that? Uh, Sanga 所以被擊殺的狀況通常都是被這個血波暈住、被打死。所以如果出了這個技能的話，就可以剛好應對這樣，可以對應他。Um, because for our comp against their comp, uh, their <coughs> kill condition is basically for the hunter, uh, which has a skill with a one minute cooldown, and um, adaptation is a <coughs> great talent to counter that. 
Sure. Yeah. So the second thing, obviously, you guys won that first matchup. The next matchup you guys move into is versus Gronks, who are sort of the tournament favorite. You guys feeling pretty confident versus Gronks? Did you get to scrim versus them a fair bit? 嗯，就是你们第一场赢了，然后下一场是对打那个澳大利亚的 Gronks， 对，他们现在被认为是赢得这场比赛，呃，几率最大的队伍。那你对打这个打他们有什么感想和准备吗？呃，有，呃，就其实比赛之前就也是最关注他们，因为他们的贼 Nux 很厉害，我们都知道很厉害，嗯，所以就也是最提防他。Uh, we've had a lot of focus on their team. Um, we've watched them before coming to the tournament because uh, they're a rogue. Uh, Grant, uh, Nax is a really good player. So I think we've prepared well. Okay, and the, the third question I have for you is quite a short one. So Mao obviously owns a food stall. Uh, do you guys actually promote it because it's good food or just because he's your friend and teammate? Uh, it's just uh,你的队友Mao他有一个那个食物的摊子,然后你是,你把你的队名叫做他的摊子名,是因为他的食物真的好吃吗,还是你就想帮他们做推广?呃,就单纯想推广,那好的那个自己的口味,我是不喜